Today on Variant, we dive into the history of the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than my producer loves them some Frosted Flakes. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. With Marvel releasing its latest cinematic spectacle this week, it's time for us to make good on our promise and give you guys the history of Doctor Strange. As we all know, Marvel spent the last 10 years turning its comics into a massive cinematic universe. And for those of you who are already familiar with his character, the addition of Doctor Strange to the MCU comes as no surprise, because the Sorcerer Supreme has played an important role in the Marvel comic universe for a long time. So let's dive in. Doctor Strange was created by writer Stan Lee and artist Steve Ditko, and debuted in Strange Tales issue 110 in 1963. At the time, Strange Tales was a split book that also featured the stories of the Human Torch. Also, here's a little fun fact for you. The original take on the Doctor Strange character was inspired by the Chandu the Magician radio show from the 1930s. That information is going to come in handy one day, so keep it a secret. Keep it safe. But anyway, this new kind of superhero, as Stan Lee called him, appeared in several issues before getting his origin story in Strange Tales issue 115. There we learned he was a brilliant but arrogant surgeon named Stephen Strange, who ends up horribly injuring the nerves in his hands in a car accident and leaves him unable to do his work. While searching the world for a way to fix his hands, Doctor Strange hears about a mystical healer called the Ancient One somewhere near India and sets out to find him and ask for his help. But when he eventually finds him in the Himalayan mountains, the Ancient One tells Stephen that he cannot heal him because his motives are selfish. Instead, he offers to make Strange his student in hopes that he would discover the healing power within himself. But the doctor wasn't having it. He calls the Ancient One a fraud and tries to leave, only to realize that he had been snowed in and was stuck there. A few days later, Stephen has his mind blown when he sees the Ancient One fight off some kind of dark magic and then rushes in to help when the conflict left the Ancient One too weak. After this, Doctor Strange quickly realizes that there are forces that exist far beyond anything that he thought he knew. He also discovers that one of the Ancient One's students, Baron Mordo, had turned evil and was attempting to summon a dark power called Dharmamu in order to kill him. But the Ancient One was already aware of Mordo's betrayal and put a stop to it. After seeing all this, Steven changes his mind and asks the Ancient One to teach him the ways of the mystic arts in order to battle Mordo and help defend the Earth against dark forces. I mean, wouldn't you? The Ancient One agrees to make him his student, but not before warning him that the path ahead would be difficult and dangerous. Doctor Strange accepts and of course goes on to become the Ancient One's successor, the Sorcerer Supreme and protector over Earth's realm. But over the next few years, Baron Mordo continued to be one of Doctor Strange's greatest enemies and threats. We eventually even learn why Mordo went full dark in later issues, but I'll get more into that when we talk about the history of Baron Mordo next week. Doctor Strange fans were also slowly introduced to his biggest baddie, the very powerful demon Dormammu ruler of the Dark Dimension. Strange would eventually come face to face with this beast when Dormammu challenged him to a mystic duel in the Dark Dimension, forcing him to accept in order to protect Earth's realm. Although Doctor Strange wasn't as powerful as Dormammu, he was able to drain his power just enough to weaken the barrier that protected the Dark Dimension from borderline unstoppably destructive beings known as the Mindless Ones. This forced Dormammu to concede and promise to spare the Earth's realm so that Doctor Strange would lend him enough power to restore the barrier and save the Dark Realm. But this defeat of course made Dormammu Dormammu furious and he vowed revenge, cementing him as the Sorcerer Supreme's most vicious and relentless enemy. During that confrontation with Dormammu, Doctor Strange also met Clea, the daughter of Dormammu's sister, Umar, and the rightful ruler of the Dark Dimension. After a series of events, Strange brought Clea to Earth for protection and she moved into the Sanctum Sanctorum, even becoming Doctor Strange's student. But it wasn't long before the two started dating and even got married at one point. But it was always a complicated on-again, off-again relationship. So let this be a lesson to you kids. Mixing business and romance? Never a good idea. Now I know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! In addition to the villains and love interests, these early issues also introduced us to characters like the Sorcerer Supreme's most trusted friend and ally, Wong. Altogether, the mystical and surreal art and storylines of the first Doctor Strange run were so different and such a departure from Marvel that it caused some readers to wonder if they were the result of the creators experimenting with drugs. What can I tell you? Gotta love the 60s. The Doctor Strange stories did allow Lee and Ditko to explore new themes and significantly expand the Marvel Universe with the introduction of various types of magic as well as the concept of the multiverse. So without the characters and ideas introduced with Doctor Strange in those early issues of Strange Tales, the Marvel Universe would definitely be less interesting. In 1968, Doctor Strange got his first solo book where writer Roy Thomas took the book in a much darker direction, giving it a more horror vibe which drastically altered the look of the series. This run only lasted 15 issues before it was canceled 
canceled due to poor sales. But not before they gave Doctor Strange an updated and much cooler costume, basically introduced Satan into the Marvel Universe as a villain named Satanish, no I'm not making that up, and teaming Doctor Strange with Black Knight to take on new Asgardian demons. Needless to say, it was a busy 15 issues, and if any of that makes its way into the cinematic world, we're in for a wild ride. Jumping ahead to the 1970s, Doctor Strange joined and led his first team of superheroes, called the Defenders. The group comprised of Doctor Strange, Hulk, Namor, and eventually Silver Surfer, was initially formed to protect Earth from beings known as the Undying Ones. The 70s also returned the character to his own solo title in 1974, and actually became an 81 issue run that lasted until 1987, making it one of the longest and maybe the most action packed runs in the character's history. Some of the highlights from the run include the return of Baron Mordo, the debut of another reoccurring supervillain known as Shuma Gorath, Doctor Strange teaming up with Nick Fury and the Halloween Commandos to stop Dormammu from trying to escape the Dark Dimension again, a crossover story that involved a battle against Dracula and time travel to ancient Egypt where Strange witnessed the Silver Age battle between a young Fantastic Four and Rama Tut. Then in 1988, writer Roy Thomas returned to the character, taking a more traditional approach this time with the title, Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme. This 90 issue run went until 1996 and featured appearances by Ghost Rider and Wolverine, and returned Baron Mordo more powerful than ever as the Sorcerer Supreme's greatest enemy. The series also introduced Mephesta, the daughter of Mephesto, and saw the Doctor go head to head with baddies like Juggernaut and Hobgoblin. During the 2000s, Doctor Strange mostly appeared as a supporting character in titles like The Amazing Spider-Man, as well as a member of the superhero teams, the Illuminati and the New Avengers. In fact, while a member of the Illuminati, Strange played a role in kicking off the events of the Planet Hulk storyline, when they banished Hulk from Earth. Then, after Hulk finds his way back and destroys half the freaking Marvel Universe in search of revenge, Doctor Strange turns to dark magic in an attempt to defeat the Hulk. This ultimately fails, and his use of dark magic causes him to doubt himself and eventually renounce his status as Sorcerer Supreme. He would of course reclaim his title a few years later as a member of the New Avengers, having become more powerful than ever. But I also couldn't go without mentioning the story that many believe is the best overall look at Doctor Strange as a character. And that would be the five issue miniseries Doctor Strange The Oath, written by Brian K. Vaughn in 2006 and 2007. The story follows Doctor Strange as he desperately seeks a cure for his good friend Wong, after he is diagnosed with brain cancer while simultaneously trying to figure out who shot him and why. After a series of events, Strange is forced to choose between saving his friend and saving the entire world. That's some crazy deep make you think stuff right there. The Oath also introduced the Night Nurse as both an emergency doctor for superheroes and Doctor Strange's new love interest. Overall, this is a must read for Doctor Strange fans. In 2015, Marvel finally returned Doctor Strange to his own solo title with writer Jason Aaron. The first arc in the series, Way of the Weird, introduced a mysterious outside force that is trying to destroy magic universe by universe and has just brought back Baron Mordo. Again. The series has also dropped a pretty serious bomb when it revealed that the use of magic is actually damaging Strange's body. Curious to see how that's gonna work. So the writing and art have been pretty epic in this title so far, and I'm pretty interested to see how the title ties in to the cinematic universe. Not to mention they gave Doctor Strange a new battle axe. That's pretty much all I needed. Speaking of weapons, let's talk about Doctor Strange's powers and abilities, shall we? As one of the most powerful sorcerers in existence, Doctor Strange draws much of his power from a group of mystical godlike beings called the Vajanti. When called upon, he channels their power mostly through several mystical artifacts, starting with his amulet, known as the Eye of Agamotto. This amulet can do things like radiate light, probe minds, open dimensional portals, pierce illusions, and expose deceptions. It's probably his most commonly used artifact. We actually posted an episode on the Eye of Agamotto a few months ago, so you can check that out here. Some of the other artifacts he uses are the Cloak of Levitation, which allows him to fly without using his own magic, the Orb of Agamotto, which he basically uses as an interdimensional surveillance device, and the Book of Ashanti. With the use of various types of magic and his own psychic abilities, Doctor Strange is able to conjure such powers as astral projection, illusion casting, time travel, interdimensional travel, matter manipulation, thought projection, and the list goes on. In short, he's a bad man without any clear limitations to his power. To sum things up, Doctor Strange has one of the most unaltered origins in comics, mostly because it's probably hard to improve on, and he just might be one of the most underrated heroes in the Marvel Universe. But if his first movie is as cool as the trailer looks, I have a feeling he won't be underrated for much longer. I should also note that there has been several other versions of the Sorcerer Supreme, but we might cover that in a future alternate versions episode. Finally, you know I couldn't leave you guys without a few Doctor Strange reading recommendations, and those are Marvel Masterworks Doctor Strange Volume 1, Doctor Strange The Oath Issues 1-5, through 5, Doctor Strange issues 60 through 62, the Montessi formula, Sorcerer Supreme once more in New Avengers Volume 2, and Doctor Strange Way of the Weird Volume 1. First up for Wednesday, November 2nd, we have Unworthy Thor Issue 1. The Odin son's desperate search to regain his worthiness has taken him out into the cosmos, where he's learned of the existence of a mysterious other Mjolnir. And finally, we have Green Arrow Issue 10. Putting it simply, it's awesome to see Green Arrow and Black Canary fighting side by side once again. If you're a longtime Green Arrow fan, you're gonna wanna read this. 
And that'll bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys on Saturday when we review Doctor Strange. Ah, uh, uh, ah. The Illuminati's. Illuminati's. The use of magic actually is damaging Doctor Strange's rally. Doctor Strange's body.